you fighters can never breathe. Don't you just want a chance to breathe? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, man, like as much as you want to put positive stuff out on the internet, you got to be mindful about like, if I do do a home workout or whatever, and I put it on social media, am I pressuring those people who are struggling at this time mentally to like go get up and exercise and making them feel shamed or worse or whatever. And like, I feel like through that, this whole pandemic, I was really conscious with how I use my platform. I use my voice and I kind of like, I don't want to post my opinion, right? Opinions are not important. Like nobody's opinion is important. Facts are important. Like justice is important. All these like basic things are important, but telling people that you're upset about this or you're upset about that, or you think this, or you think that it's like, man, like there's so much pressure from uh, from society and just pushing everyone to be this and that. And it's not just fighters, but like it mainly is fighters because they expect us to be kind of these unbreakable human beings that have everything sorted out. It's like, just because we can win fights doesn't mean we don't have our home life under control, like sometimes. And I'm sure a lot of people out there don't. And I mean, like not to kind of, put her in a bad light but someone like Rachel Ostovich I mean her whole life got put on show for like that small moment and it's like how do how do we not know what's going on in everyone's homes I don't think anyone expected someone as kind of bubbly and 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 kind of positive as Rachel to kind of come out and be like or or not she didn't even have to come out it kind of just made headlines that she went through what she went through and I'm sure like a lot of other female MMA fighters or even like male MMA fighters that are struggling with depression or all sorts of stuff that's going on behind closed doors that they, they don't want to promote on their social media because they have a platform and it's meant to be used for a positive and that kind of thing. And they don't reach out because we're fighters and we think we're tough as shit. And so therefore like we don't usually ask for help and it's like kind of like using your platform at the moment. I mean, there's, a, there's a few like great, especially in the black lives matter, um, there's a guy called Ian Butler in um, Bellator who studied his own initiative and is selling. Um, if anyone like has not seen him go jump onto his Instagram, he's raising money by on his own as a representative of mixed martial arts, um, selling face masks and t-shirts to raise money and to go to the right causes for black lives matter. I mean, that initiative by itself is so great. And it's so great to see that these fighters who kind of often get stereotyped as, not caring or or being too I guess like masculine in a sense have kind of shown that they they are more than just a fighter and more than just an athlete and they can kind of use their platform for a positive sense I mean it's it's hard to kind of live up to everyone's expectations and make sure that you're happy all the time and I mean when you see people not post on social media you're kind of just like are you okay like because if you're not posting then possibly something's going on and instead a lot of time fans kind of expect if you're not posting, then you're not training. So you're not good enough of an athlete. It's like, that may not be the case. They may be training, but they may not be taking a photo every time they do it. Or they may not be, I don't know, like posting it or, or whatever it is. It's like these social pressures kind of cause extra negative mindsets for, for a lot of people. And a lot of people want to fight and, and they don't want to create their brand. They just want to fight. Like they just love martial arts. So like good on them. Like they can have 600 followers and be happy with their lives. So you shouldn't have to pressure them. They may not need sponsors or whatever it is. And it's like, bro, like not everyone is, um, I guess we don't owe people stuff in a sense. We love fighting for the fans. I said this on a different interview. Um, I love fighting for the fans. I really do. And I find that when I do fight, I push the pace so that it's always somewhat, I guess, entertaining. And I'm so happy when after the fight, a lot of people say how entertaining it was, win or lose. But it's also like, you have to keep in mind, we fight for us. Like it's our health on the line and our like lifestyle on the line. It's not a very consistent income. It's not a very, I guess, like square job that or employment that we have. So therefore like we're risking a lot and sacrificing a lot, but we're also doing it because we love it, not just for you guys. So as much as like, I love my fan base and I love the people that follow me and I, I, I'm happy that I've kind of built a fan base that's fairly understanding and like I feel like I'm fairly transparent on my social media and they don't kind of expect anything from me you know they're never going to get booty pictures or anything like that so I'm, I don't have any kind of crazy pressure and that kind of stuff but in a sense I see a lot of people just like pressuring these these MMA fighters to like 
post this, do this, tell us this. Why haven't you been training? What is your weight like? It's like, why are you asking? We don't have to tell you these things. Our life is our life. So, so please just let us do our job and, and hopefully it's entertaining for you guys.